Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. Today what I'm going to take you through are my top five easy fixes that you could be doing to help make sure that you don't miss out on some smaller marks in the OCRA chemistry examinations. I'm using feedback that's on the 2019 examiner's highlights. It's available on the OCR website if you go to chemistry and it's absolutely brilliant for finding out what those little corrections are that you could be making to your work to help you improve overall. So without further ado, here are my top five easy fixes that you could be changing about your work to help make sure you're not missing out on some smaller marks for A-level chemistry. Okay, so in at number five, we've got showing a sign on your answer. In the examiner's highlights, they bring this up for electro potentials, where you absolutely should show a positive or a negative on your answer in volts in the exam. But also I've started to notice that it comes up in enthalpy change responses, even where it's endothermic. So my advice for you is whenever you get a calculation in the exam for an electrode potential, an enthalpy change or an entropy change, that you always put a sign on your answer just in case you feel like you might have missed it in the question, but also especially if it's a level of response. In at number four, we've got rounding up a number mid-calculation. People still do this in their final exams. Believe it or not, I guarantee that this will have been something that stopped someone getting into university after their A-level in chemistry. You've got to make sure that you don't round up any numbers mid-calculation. If your final answer needs to be to three significant figures, as instructed by the question, and you're rounding up numbers to two significant figures midway, you aren't going to end up with the right answer. So you need to make sure you keep that number on your calculator screen. Yes, it will take you longer if you're showing all you're working out, but you are far more likely to get the maximum credit for the question. So number four was making sure you don't round up any numbers mid-calculation. Number three on this list is all about group seven, but also group two, which is in module three of your A-level chemistry specification if you're with OCR. I personally find when I'm teaching this as well that people overlook this section of the spec and it was nice to see in the examiner's highlights that they talk about the oxidizing power of the halogen and the reducing power of the halide as an area where candidates need to have a little bit more recall or insight into the trends that are taking place really don't overlook this section of the spec. You may be taught this around January, February time as part of your chemistry A level, and it is an area that I find that candidates don't really take as seriously as say enthalpy changes or curly arrow mechanisms. This is an easy place to pick up some marks, and it's definitely something that you need to put a lot of attention on when you're revising module three. Okay, so the second most important thing you could be doing with regards to these easy fixes is all about the KC and KP expressions. I don't even mean the calculations of these values. I mean actually making sure that you do products over reactants, that you don't use square brackets in KP, that you read the question for the units that you're meant to be using for pressure and then use those to determine the units of KP that only concentration units actually get used in the KC calculation terms. You've got to make sure you know these expressions inside and out, and it doesn't just mean memorizing how to do the calculations. And finally, my top easy fix is all about self-awareness, and it's self-awareness with regards to presentation. It's how you put your answer on the page. No one's expecting you to be an artist. No one's expecting you to have perfect handwriting, but you've got to be realistic. I know my handwriting isn't great, and I know sometimes my diagrams might be a little bit rushed if I'm in a hurry, but I would know that when I'm doing an exam, that I need to make sure that my answer is as legible as it's gonna get. And even if it means over-exaggerating things like chemical formulae and state symbols, I have to make sure I do it that way. The other one I've noticed is diagrams. I looked at some exam board exemplar material recently and they critiqued a student for some disconnections at the wire and the metal electrode in an electrochemical cell diagram. That was done because potentially the diagram was done quite hastily and without precision. It goes hand in hand with this idea of making sure that your presentation is as clear as possible if you're not the tidiest of worker. 
And it's about being self-aware of that. I'm not expecting you to suddenly fix your handwriting. I'm asking you to make reasonable adjustments to help you get that better grade. The other thing is, if you know you're not the crispest when it comes to wording or presentation, don't write too much for level of response questions. Try and keep it so that it's bullet pointed, that it's factual, and so it can be easily gone over by yourself or an examiner. So thanks for watching our video on the top five easy fixes you could be making to your chemistry A-level exam. Feel free to click the other videos on screen now or check the cards on this video for other videos relating to examiner comments. Until next time, happy revising.